Okay. I'm pretty sure that it's uh, time that we uh, we kick off the uh, the 2020 Australian Business Book Awards. Uh, g'day, Michael. How are you going? Good, thanks, Andrew. How are you doing? Uh, very, very well, thank you. Uh, ladies and gents, for those of you who don't know, my name is Andrew Griffiths, uh, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Australian Business Book Awards, and uh, I'm going to be one of your hosts tonight, alongside my good friend, Mr. Michael Hanrahan. Don't know what else you like that. <laughs> thank you thanks so much for tuning in we appreciate this now i believe that tonight we're also in the same time slot as the arias so clearly you've chosen to come to the australian business book awards we like the fact that you're being classy and coming here instead of those those arias uh much better place to be thank you very much drew brown and to uh, everyone else who's tuned in the abba's rock thank you so much and, uh, and a few of you have got sequins on as well. And Michael, a few people have noticed that you've actually got a jacket on. And uh, there's quite a little bit of commenting there uh, about that as well. Um, yeah, I dressed up just for the night. Good on you, mate. Good on you. So, folks, please feel free to put uh, any of your um, comments into the chat box. You're welcome to give us a little bit of feedback as we move through the night. We've uh, got so much stuff that we want to share. So I think we get this rock show on the road. Uh, we want to start off just by perhaps talking a little bit about the awards, what they actually stand for, uh, what they mean. And I'm going to hand across to Michael to talk a bit about this. Yeah, so um, one of the main drivers behind starting the awards was I've been working in this area of publishing for over 20 years and would get asked regularly by the authors that we work with, are there any awards that we can enter our books into? And the answer would always be no. Um, so there's, you know, there's romance book awards, science fiction book awards, all sorts, of all sorts of categories of awards, but there's never in Australia been an award for business books. There are a couple overseas. So we had it on the, you know, our list of things to do to, to start up a, a business book awards. And then Andrew, you said to us a couple of years ago at one of our breakfasts, hey, we should do some book awards. So that's how it all came about. So um, the idea behind it is to um, demonstrate the quality of publishing in this area. Um, it's to promote, um, promote the authors and their books. A lot of the authors we work with, um, as you know, take a couple of years effort for them to get the book out. So we want to recognize that, recognize the quality of books being published in this area. Mm, so, so important. I mean, I, I've been publishing for many, many years and I look at it and when I first started writing books, it was mainly all about English writers, American authors, and there was a lot of that talent that was imported into Australia. Um, and one of the things that I've realised so much is that there's an incredible pool of talent with Australian authors, easily some of the best in the world. And, uh, and, and I think that that's something that we, we do really want to acknowledge and that we want to kind of make the most of, you know, when we're doing this as well. So to kind of, you know, give that voice to the Australian nonfiction authors who perhaps didn't have that uh, space before. So last year was our first awards. It was really, really successful. I think Michael and I and Anna and Lolita, the, the behind the scenes team, we were a bit uncertain about how it would go this year um, in, in the, you know, in the light of the, the COVID world. And we've actually had a, a, a bigger response. It's been, uh, it's been, I mean, extraordinary this year, even, you know, considering it's only the second year. I mean, what's your take on that, Michael? Yeah, so um, we had 53 books entered last year and it was 69 this year, which we were very excited about. Um, you know, given everything that's gone on this year, like everybody with everything at the start of the year when things started getting locked down, we got a bit concerned, but we decided to press on and the response has been absolutely fabulous. It's kind of interesting though, we are thinking about next year is going to be huge because uh, there's certainly been a lot of people that have taken advantage of a lockdown life and, uh, and they've decided yeah. to... Uh, to, to write their books. So, um, so, and judging by the workload of most of the people that we know in the publishing space, it's been a really, really big year. Um, so yeah. look out next year, 20, 2021 ABBAs are gonna be huge. <laughs> I love it. Um, now, of course, we couldn't do the awards without sponsors. We'd like to just say a, a couple of thank yous in here if we could. Uh, Michael, Smart, WF, Smart WFM came on board as our platinum sponsor. Um, Jared and mm -hmm. Michelle McGrath, awesome, awesome people. Uh, how's that been for you working out behind the scenes with those guys, mate? Yeah, that's been fantastic. Jared's been extremely enthusiastic, very supportive, um, significant financial contribution, um, getting involved in other ways as well. He got his marketing team on board. Um, very, very generous from, from Jared and the Smart WFM team. 
I, I mean, really, they, I, I think they've been the the dream platinum sponsor in, in every sense of the word. We'd ring Jared and say, can you put some more money in? And he goes, sure. You know, can you sign up? Sure. Can you do it? And you know why? Not really to promote the company name, but to promote Indigenous literacy and to encourage new authors uh, in, yeah. in Australia. And, and what I love about our partnership with Smart WFM is it's done for the right reasons. Our conversations are not all about how can we get more for our brand and all this stuff. It's how can we support the awards more? How can we support Australian authors? And I've got to say, I absolutely love and adore that fact. Um, and in fact, we've got um, a message uh, from Jared. So, because uh, he knew he wouldn't get a word in each ways with me on the end of the line. So, uh, so Jared recorded this for us uh, a little bit earlier. The night has finally arrived. I'm sure you've all been waiting anxiously for the Australian Business Book Awards. I'm Jared McGrath, founder of Smart WFM, a digital transformation consultancy, and proud premier sponsor of the awards. As a business book author myself, I felt a strong passion to get involved with these awards and the clincher for me to get involved was a strong association between the awards and the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. This is a topic that our family is very passionate about. I was looking through the many entries and I would like to congratulate you on your professionalism, your passion and your purpose for writing on topics that you felt so strongly about and wanted to give that knowledge back to others. Those that will win from this are not only the people that read your books, but also more generally society and the Australian economy. You're all winners in my mind, and I would like to wish you all the best tonight. Onward with the awards. Thank you. I'm Jared McGrath. Good on you, Jared. It's a low, low applause. There's only two of us, but we know that you're applauding. How cool is that? How cool is Jared? And of course, we've also got other fabulous, fabulous sponsors as well. You know, the team at 5x5, Five Five, Ingram Spark, um, you know, supported us last year as well, as did 5x5, Five Five, um, who do, you know, comp great computer um, projects. Ingram Spark, most authors know who Ingram Spark are. Thank you for those virtual claps, everyone. Um, triple win, Rosemary Shapiro Lou has donated a great prize for one of our category winners. Uh, a great mate, Darren Fingelstein, whose uh, business is Tick Those Boxes. He's an accountability coach. If you want to get stuff done, you've got to get Daz on board. Publish Central, um, Michael and Anna and uh, all of the books that you guys produce, obviously, and all the time you've put together in the awards. Uh, Department Digital, Doyle Bueller in WA there, the digital dude. Uh, again, every one of these people are also authors, I might add as well. Um, Tracy Sheen, who's going to be an author very soon, the digital guide. Her book is coming out very soon. The lovely Melinda Hurd. Um, who's very, very generously given an author show reel for as a prize. Um, so generous, Melinda. And of course, even my little, uh, my little organization is in there as well. Great sponsors, not thousands of them, but the, the quality and most wonderful, wonderful people involved. Thank you very much. Now, the ABBAs are not for profit. So what that really means is that any extra funds go towards uh, our organization, which in this case is the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. And uh, what an organization that is. Uh, if you don't know much about them, um, I'd really encourage you to check out indigenousliteracyfoundation.org.au. Uh, um, and, you know, they're really charged with, with helping to, to build literacy in Indigenous communities um, around Australia. And, uh, and, you know, up in Cape York, Torres Strait, throughout Northern Territory, all central desert areas everywhere. An amazing, amazing um, organisation. This year, Michael, what do we want to announce? Very excited to announce that we're donating $10,000 as, as a result of the awards this year to the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. So that's um, a big jump over last year and we're very, very proud of it. Pretty amazing, $10,000 in our second year uh, of doing the awards. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm you know kind of blown away uh, a little bit by 
by that fact. So, and that's partially, certainly with Jared uh, and Smart WFM's help, um, as much as with just, you know, how we've run more entries, all that kind of stuff as well. So, um, so we're going to be giving a $10,000 donation to the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. Very, very cool. Now, we've also got a great message from Karen Williams, who's the Executive Director uh, of the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. And I'm just noticing there in the comments, a lot of people are saying that they're big supporters already. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to encourage you even after the awards to keep an eye out for the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. And, and if you can support them in any shape or form, please do. But before that, Karen Williams, the Executive Director of ILF. On behalf of the Indigenous Literacy Foundation, I'd like to thank the Australian Business Book Awards and your key sponsor, Smart WFM, for your incredibly generous donation. With it next year, we are aiming to deliver nearly 100,000 books to over 300 remote communities right across Australia. We are aiming also to publish 30 books, many in first languages. Can you possibly imagine the sense of excitement a child or an elder will feel in a community when they receive that book? Thank you so much. Your support matters. Mm. What, a, uh, what a beautiful message. And isn't that fabulous to know every entry you know your entry fee hasn't gone to my maserati as much as i've asked michael and Anna to buy me a maserati it hasn't gone to you know long lunches it's it's just you know it, it's gone to to processing doing the awards and raising funds at the same time um and you know think about that you know like putting money into the into the actual awards in, into the indigenous literacy foundation to be able to do that is something it, it's a thing i'm most proud of i, I think you know i'm blown away michael um by this year's result to be really honest so um yeah absolutely it's it's uh beyond our wildest dreams especially given what's been going on this year so yeah and, very exciting. you know people are making a big difference with their books impacting on mm. lives you know, this is another way that we can impact uh, on on many people's lives. So it's a very, very cool thing. Um, so thank you again for your kind comments there in the chat box as well, everyone. Um, now, our judges, let's talk about the judges and the judging process. Uh, we've got an amazing team of judges. This is what they look like. They're, they're a bloody good looking bunch of judges, if you ask me. Um, probably the best looking judges that, well, there's a few dodgy ones in there. Bushy Martin's a bit of a worry. You know, and you know, but but overall, they're a very very good looking bunch. Michael, do you want to just tell us a little bit about the judging process um, because it's it's not easy the judging process when you've got seventy odd books to work and read and judge and all the rest of it. No, it's not. No, well, no physical appearance was certainly one of our criteria for picking our judges. But um, <laughs> but um, so the one of the issues we've had from from day one with the judging that we want to be very careful with is we wanted to get the best judges in the business. Uh, who were publishing in this area, working in this area. And if we did that, there was going to be no doubt that some of the judges would have worked on some of the books that were entered, which is which was something we had to had to manage. So the way we've done that is when people enter their books, um, they have to, uh, when they fill out the form, the entry form, they have to say who edited their book, who designed the cover, um, if they work with a publishing company, give us all the details to make sure that we didn't give their book to a person, uh, to a judge who'd actually worked on the book. And we also told the judges, if you inadvertently did get a book that you'd worked on, to let us know and we'd swap it over. So that's that's a very important part of the process for us. Um, obviously, you can't be um, uh, honestly judging a book that you've worked on. Um, so that's that's been key for us from day one. Um, the judges all get uh, a, a spreadsheet with criteria. So all books are assessed in the same way. And we also did a video for them to explain the things to look out for. Um, very important for us as well was getting a mix of judges. So if I look at the screen here, we've got designers, printers, editors, writers, publishers. Um, Bushy, he's, he's one of last year's winners, so obviously uh, well qualified to be a judge. So yeah, a lot, a lot of work, a lot of effort's gone into making the, making the judging um, you know, really, really high quality. And I'd just like to add uh, one, one thing that I think is pretty amazing is um, the level of commitment of all of our judges. Mm. Been, but it totally yeah. extraordinary. It is a really big job. I mean, like I had eight mm. books to read. You know, like mm. you think about 
we're all busy people and you can't because someone's made the effort to enter their book in there you you can't just flick through it and go oh that's it you you really want to do a great job um of the, the judging so you can understand that you know and those who are judging audio books have really got to listen to the entire audio book and you know there's a whole pile of things in there that make it far more complicated than perhaps most people would realize as well um yeah if, if we kind of just rattle through we'd just like to thank our judges as we go through uh the lovely yeah. bev ryan and ann wilson um thank you very much ladies both you know, in the in the publishing world um kirsty ogden brisbane self-publishing great to have your judge yeah charlotte duff she's our senior editor she's been in the industry for years I love that. Thank you, Louise Cox. There, you're you're doing a great job of naming all the judges for us in the chat box. Uh, <laughs> Leslie uh, from Major Street, you've worked with Le Leslie for many years, Michael, right? Leslie gave me my first job in publishing twenty something years ago. Oh. So she used to work at uh, John Wiley and Sons. Was former was CEO of Five Mile Press and now runs her own little publishing company, Major Street, who produced excellent books. So one one of the um, real up and coming uh, publishing companies in Australia. Amazing. And Vanessa? Um, yes, Vanessa is, um, she's also ex Wiley. Um, she's also worked at Lonely Planet and Penguin and is now a freelance writer, editor and typesetter. Awesome. Uh, Ocean Reeve is a friend of, of many. Ocean uh, has been a great fan and supporter. More importantly, I think of the Abbas and uh, Ocean's always doing uh, amazing things with uh, Ocean Reeve Publishing, a very, very good man. Uh, the lovely Kate Christie, she's our, um, our she, she's went above and beyond the call of duty in, in the judging awards this year. So, Kate, and you know, what I love too is Kate, Kate was an author, you know, we, I, I coached Kate in her first book. I think she's now finished her 27th book or something like that, or it feels like that. It's not really, but it feels like that. Um, you know, th this is what the judges are all about. Um, Kemi, Kemi Neck, Neck Vapil, sorry, Kemi, just delightful human being about to publish her uh, third book, I think it is. Again, it's hard to keep track. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful judge. Um, Doyle Bueller, you know, Mr. Digital, Doyle's um, intelligence and consideration we're judging, always hugely valued. Over to you, Michael. Yep, so um, Kerry is one of our designers, so um, very, very experienced, uh, works for a lot of different publishing companies, and Tracy Sheen, uh, known as the digital guide, absolute digital expert, and as you mentioned, uh, about to be a published author in February next year. Love that. Uh, Debbie Lee from Ingram, um, extra special thanks to Ingram. They were our very first sponsor to come on board last year. So um, a lot of uh, self-publishers are familiar with Ingram Spark. So they've given us a lot of support. And Ronsley is one of our audiobook experts. Awesome. And Peter Ridden, uh, another ex Wiley. Um, he's he's our one of our cover designers, worked for all sorts of major publishers. Um, and Catherine Maslin uh, is a clinical naturopath and um, she was judging in the health category. Yeah, great. And Pauline Phillips, uh, yet another ex Wiley, so we've kind of got the gang back together again. Um, she's now a freelance editor and proofreader. And Dave Stokes is our other audiobook expert with his company, Author to Audio. The infamous Bushy Martin who uh, we talked about before. I think he won like just about every category last year, didn't he? Uh, he did. Yeah. It was uh, an amazing and a, a great friend, another supporter uh, of all things uh, publishing. And of course, Michael and I uh, also were judges. And again, the point we, we really want to drive home is any of us who have had any professional dealing with an author can't judge their book. You know, so it's really, really, it, it, that's kind of interesting. I'm looking at books that are all fresh um, and I've had nothing to do with them. So for us, the integrity of the awards is vitally important. Um, so it's certainly something that we uh, want to make uh, sure of. I'm sorry, there seems to be a little bit of static on the line. I'm not quite sure if anyone else is hearing that or if it's just happening at my end, but there's some irritating little noise there. But anyway, we'll move on. So a very big thank you to each and every one of our judges. It is a huge job, time consuming to read, um, but we're very proud of the integrity of our judging process, most importantly. Um, that's what yeah. it's all about. Okay, so I guess, Michael, really what we've got to do now is we've got to stop yabbering 
and um, start looking at um, some of the awards. Now, we yep, have got people here. Yeah, that's right. That's why everyone's here, right? Um, so these are the categories, okay? Entrepreneurship and small business, personal development, communication and sales, personal finance and investment, management and HR, leadership, health and well-being, general business, best marketing and publicity for a book, best cover design for a book, best audio book, and then, of course, the coveted ooh, book of the year. Um, now... Clearly, you know, the, 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 these are the you know, Australian Business Book Awards. It doesn't mean, obviously, quite literally that they're all, you know, you know, business economics and all that kind of stuff. So these are the categories that show they're all nonfiction books. They're looking at uh, a broader category there um, around the business side of things. So we want to say a very sincere thank you to each and every author who's entered the awards. We get that it's a big thing to do. You know, it's putting yourself out there. Um, it's, you know, it's not an easy thing to do to put your book up for peer review, okay? Um, it's getting harder and harder for us to judge the awards because the books are just extraordinary. Um, the, and, and that is something that we love. But a message that Michael and I spoke about before we started today was, if you don't win tonight, please don't take that as a measure that your book is not good, okay? It is not about that at all. We have a judging process that judges on certain criteria. It is a points-based system. It's a very kind of foolproof way of judging a book in some ways. But we just want you to know the, the books that have come through, audio, physical books have been extraordinary. And, uh, and you know, if you don't become a finalist and if you don't win an award, it, it just, you know, understand that, that, you know, we can't have 70 awards. Um, you know, I, I guess that's really what I'm trying to say. Anything you want to add to that, Michael? Um, yeah, the standard this year has been absolutely amazing. Um, we've had books from self-publishers, traditional publishers, large and small. And the standard, I mean, it's only our second year, but the standard's definitely even higher than last year. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, please, please, please understand that and, uh, and know, uh, yeah, that we have a really a robust judging system, but, you know, Every book that was entered was pretty extraordinary. All right, Michael, I think I'm going to hand over to you. Uh, I'm for the first one. I think that's you, entrepreneurship and small business. Yes, it is. Yep. So, category one, entrepreneurship and small business. So, this category had 13 books entered. Um, there was a good range here. We had a book about how to start a cafe, um, how to run a dance studio. Um, we had a book about selling. Um, uh, we had a book about how to build your business in Europe. Um, so it's a good range and uh, 13 entries makes it a fairly large category. Awesome. And so the three finalists are The Four Steps to Generate Your First Million Euros in Sales by Christelle Damians, um, Word Glue by Louise Karch, and I hope I've pronounced that correctly, and The Mother of All Opportunities by Katrina McCarter. Awesome. Three and the winner books. is, yeah, three fantastic books. Word Glue by Louise Karch. Woohoo! Yeah. Hey. Louise Cash. Thank you, Louise. Congratulations. Uh, I love that. Any apologies, Louise? Congratulations. Well done. First winner of the night. And so the prize is a three-month accountability coaching program from the wonderful Darren Finkelstein, who we work with very closely. Um, if you need to get things done, uh, you need to have a chat to Darren. He's absolutely fantastic. So that's a great prize for, for Louise. Congratulations. Well done, Louise. Awesome. Love that. Okay. Category number two, personal development. Uh, how do we go with entries in uh, the personal development category, mate? This was actually the largest. There were 26 entries in this one. Wow. Um, so yeah. So we had a book about um, developing your personal brand. Um, we had some books about gender. We had a book about uh, developing your career. A um, couple of books about developing your career. So a really good range in this one as well. I love it. And a book about step parenting, which is interesting. About what, sorry? Step parenting. Ah, yeah, I know. That was so great. Quite, quite a wide range. Yeah. Love it. Okay. This time it's over to me. The Category 2 Personal Development finalists are uh, Death Doesn't Have to Be Morbid by Michelle Cox. Beautiful. Braver Than You Think by Emily Hales. Uh, another great book. And uh, Awkward is the New Brave uh, by Belle Lockerbie. 
congratulations to our three finalists in this category. And the winner is Death Doesn't Have to Be Morbid by Michelle Cox. Congratulations. Yeah. Held up and modeled beautifully by Michael, I might add. Eric Winters doing a nice little round of applause there. Thank you. Great, great book. It scored really well. Nice title. And of course, there were so many people in this category. That made it a very, very tough kind of category as well. Yeah. So good on you, Michelle. You win well, well a great prize from the lovely Rosemary Shapiro Lou from Triple Win. And you get a virtual retreat. Uh, with Rosemary. She'll tell you all about it, where you can get to spend a, a three-hour virtual retreat and a 45-minute accountability and traction session and a copy of Rosemary's wonderful book called The Mentor Within. It is a fabulous prize uh, and something that I think you're going to really, really enjoy immensely, Michelle. Congratulations. What well up, Michelle. Okay, category number three, communication and sales. How did this one look, Michael? Okay, so this one had 12 entries. Um, so again, an interesting mix. We had a couple of books about branding, um, a book about making video for your business, um, a book about graphic design for your business. Um, so yeah, good, a good range of books in here. Yeah, great. And so the three finalists were Graphic Design Speak by Tess McCabe, Journey to Sold by Jeff Grist, and The Four Steps to Generate Your First Million Euros in Sales by Christelle Damians. And the winner is Christelle Damien's The Four Steps to Generate Your First Million Euros in Sales. Woohoo! Uh, congratulations. congratulations, Christelle. Well done. Uh, Very exciting. Uh, I wonder if Christelle's on the line. I'm hoping she is. I'm not sure. It's not one of those things if you're not here, you don't get the prize. It's not like a meet <laughs> Okay. Good on you, Christelle. And your prize well, there. So great book. Yes. So the prize, this is a fabulous prize. So Melinda Heard from Melinda Heard Photography and Video. Um, has recently come up with a new product doing a book trailer video for your book. So it's a fabulous way to promote your book. You can use it on social media, put it on your website, all that kind of thing. So that's, that's a really exciting prize for Christelle. Yeah, awesome. Congratulations, Christelle. And thank you for your generosity, uh, Mel Heard as well. Very, very cool. Okay, category number four, personal finance and investment. How did we go with this one, uh, Michael? Um, yeah, this is a slightly smaller category. There were nine books. Okay. Um, so there's a few property investment books, uh, a book about how to pay off your mortgage, um, a book about uh, lifestyle and legacy. So yeah, one of the slightly smaller categories this year. Okay. Uh, our finalists for this, uh, this category, category number four, uh, how to get mortgage free. It's a good idea by Nicole Peterson McKinnon. Uh, we've got... Um, Oops, sorry. Uh, yes, then we've got Share Plicity uh, by Danielle Ekuya. I uh, hope I've spelt your, your surname right there, Danielle. And then The Joy of Money. That's a good name, isn't it? Kate McCallum and Julia Newbold. Uh, so three quality, quality books. And the winner is The Joy of Money by Kate McCallum and Julia Newbold. And uh, Michael's raising up. Congratulations there, ladies. Uh, hey. Hopefully, are we on the line there? Um, yeah, it is a great cover, isn't it? Uh, a few people saying yeah, that. Yeah, fantastic cover. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Now, um, ladies, what you win is a, a publishing services package from Publish Central. That's Michael and the team. And that can be any kind of combination of advice on your current or your next book, printing, uh, ebook and print on demand setup or you can put that money towards the production of your next book. Because we all know, those of you who are on the line here as authors, that there is always the next book, right? Always, always, always. Um, that's fabulous. Congratulations, ladies. The joy of money, Kate McKellum and Juliet Newbold. Okay, category five, management and HR, Michael. How was this topic? Yeah, so this is another slightly smaller one, nine books in this category. So um, we had a couple of books about leadership, um, again, a couple of career books. Uh, I had a book specifically about the NDIS. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so again, like I so say, slightly smaller category, this one. Okay. And so the three finalists are Raising Leaders by Wendy Bourne, Culture Fix by Colin Ellis, and People Stuff by Zoe Routh. And the winner is People Stuff by Zoe Routh. Yay! Awesome. Congratulations, Zoe. Love this cover. Looks fantastic. 
Yeah. Well done, Zoe. Congratulations. Great yeah, looking book. Cool. Our biggest challenge was trying to find the 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 correct E with the two little dots over it for our, our keyboard, which you can tell we probably haven't had much luck with that. Um, fabulous. <laughs> and what does she win? Um, well, Michael, you can describe my prize now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she wins the fabulous Andrew Griffiths Book Power Program, which is a six-month program designed to teach new authors how to leverage their book to get the best return on their investment. Awesome. And we'll Fantastic prize. Thank you, mate. We'll, and to all of the category winners, we'll be sending you out a, 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 um, a trophy, a whole pile of um, little uh, decals that you can use. You can uh, email signatures, all that kind of stuff that you can really use to promote the fact that you've been a finalist and a winner um, as well. So we do that for, I believe all of the finalists get, um, get that, Michael, is that right? Yeah, absolutely correct. All the finalists, you get stickers, um, you get everything as image files, you can put it on social media, all that kind of thing. So that'll be coming out to everybody in the next few days. Love that a lot. Okay, category number uh, six is leadership. And uh, big, big one on this one as well. How do we go with our entries for this, Michael? Yeah, a larger one. So 17 books in this category. Um, so a good mix. Um, a, a few books about uh, career development, uh, obviously a few books about leadership. Um, so yeah, one of the larger categories, this one, 17 books. Awesome. Mm, books about leadership in the leadership category, hey? Yeah. Very tricky. So our finalists for the category six leadership, people stuff again, uh, Zoe Routh, congratulations. Uh, we've got Quietly Powerful, it's a beautiful cover by Megumi Mickey. And, uh, and Raising Leaders by Wendy Bourne. So there's a few books that are starting to appear in a few categories here, aren't there, as, uh, as mm -hmm. finalists. And the winner of this particular category is this lovely book by Megumi Mickey or Mikey. Please forgive me, uh, Megumi, if I mispronounce uh, your name and Quietly Powerful. And uh, I just, I love your cover here too, uh, Megumi. Yeah, fantastic. Just beautiful. And so I I've never seen a cover that's felt quiet. Um, and your cover feels quiet, which is quite an art. Now you, yeah. Megumi, win a great prize. You get a two and a half hour digital business audit with Tracy Sheen, the digital guide. Uh, you'll be able to do, spend that time really kind of reviewing every part of your business to look for gaps and areas of opportunity uh, that could be taken advantage of through the use of technology, uh, productivity, marketing, sales, through to even organizing your own life better. I'm just gonna say it would take more than two and a half hours to organize my life, but if anyone can do it, Tracy Sheen, the digital guide can. And uh, just fabulous, fabulous. Okay, category number seven, Michael, health and well-being. Uh, how do we go in that category? Yep, so we had 11 books in this category. Um, a good range again. Uh, there's a book about um, writing to get healthy. Uh, there's a book about dealing with depression. Um, this book about doctors, uh, the book about step parenting again that I mentioned before. So um, yeah, another another diverse category. Love it. Okay. So here's the three finalists for health and wellbeing. We've got the joy of money, ride to life, and stick it to depression. So I didn't mention the author's names. The joy of money by Kate McCallum and Julia Newbold. Uh, ride to life by Professor Gary M. Leong, and stick it to depression by Alexander. Uh, Janu, um, apologies Joanu. if I didn't pronounce that correct. Right. Janu, uh, yeah. Doctor. Apologies if you didn't get that correct. Dr. Alex. Yeah, Dr. Alex. And the winner is Ride to Life. Yeah, awesome. Hey, nice. Congratulations. Another great cover. There's been a lot of covers, great covers so far today. Yeah, I love that cover. It's very, very clean and an unusual shaped book as well, right? Yes, so, it is. Yes. Bit yeah. of a workbook, actually. So, which is probably part of the reason for the shape. Ah, nice, nice, nice. And his prize comes back to me again, Michael. Yep, yep. So this is another one of fabulous, Andrew's fabulous book power programs. So um, everything Andrew does is brilliant. So if you win one of these prizes, you're very, very lucky. This, is, this will um, teach you how to leverage your book. So um, fantastic uh, for authors who have already published and uh, want to get the most out of their book. Awesome. Thank you. And once again, we'll send you all the details to our prize winners on how to take advantage of that. So congratulations, uh, Dr. Gary Leon. Okay, category eight, general business. Okay, and uh, how was this? I guess this is a catch-all kind of category, right? Yeah, this is this is the category for books that don't specifically fit anywhere else. So there is a little bit of a range of books in this category. So we had 13 entries this year. Uh, there's a book about innovation. 
Um, there's a book about how your business can be both profitable and have a good social cause. Um, there's the dance studio, a book about how to start a dance studio, a branding book. Um, so the, the how to do video for your business book. So this is this is probably the broadest range of books, again, because it is for books that don't fit specifically in any other category. Awesome. So our category finalists are uh, Separate Ways uh, by Shaya Lewis Demodi. Uh, we've got Innovation in Australia by Ben Kehoe. And then we've got the project book by Colin Ellis. So uh, Colin obviously published two books in, uh, in the last financial year. So he's been a, a pretty busy kind of a fella. And the winner of category eight, general business, actually is Colin Ellis uh, with the project book. Um, again, nice quality book. I, I like the way you're holding those up, Michael. Very stylish. Very, very I mean, nice. All week. It's, yeah. it, it's, the practice has paid off, I'm going to say. <laughs> Congratulations, Colin. Um, and, you know, your prize is uh, the, the fabulous web developers 5x5. Five five. They've donated a web consultation and strategy package, which is actually a really cool kind of a package because I think a lot of people don't put enough time and thought into the, the strategy, their online strategy um, in particular. So uh, working with a 5x5 five five team, um, like uh, seriously, you're going to get a great strategy out of doing that. Um, and it's going to help you right through to mapping out your website architecture, uh, right through to understanding what opportunities exist in Google, et cetera, for you. So congratulations, uh, Colin, and thank you very much to the team at 5x5. Five five. Okay, category number nine, best marketing and publicity. So generally, this is a bit of a small one, I think, Michael. Um, how was it this year in terms of entries? Small, yeah. So okay. There was only two entries. So yeah, so um, might just skip to the next slide because there's... Uh, I'd love to talk about only two entries in this category. So we had Positively Geared by Lloyd Edge and Step Parenting with Purpose by Carolee uh, Katzenbanis. And again, apologies if I got the name wrong. So you get, all the, so, you get all the hard names in the, in I the do. process, it looks like. Yeah, you planned this, didn't you, Andrew? <laughs> and so the winner is Positively Geared. Congratulations, Lloyd. Lloyd. Nice. Keep How to build a million dollar property portfolio from a 40K deposit. I think I might hang on to that. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I need to read that myself. And his prize? Um, his prize is a three-hour workshop and a one-hour book marketing plan review with Doyle. Um, Doyle's fantastic. Um, I've done a bit of work with him in the past. Uh, it's a very, very good prize. So um, that will help you with your uh, promotion and marketing and that kind of thing. So for your business and your book. Awesome. Okay. So that's the end of our kind of categories as in, you know, marketing or general business, et cetera. But now we move into the broad, well, the more book features. So we next three are the best cover design, the best audio book, and then of course the book of the year. So uh, it's kind of interesting this and the best cover design is always challenging. So um, tell us a bit about the, the best cover design, the process for that as well, Michael. Yeah, so there's a lot involved in it. It's not about obviously just picking, you know, the one that, that looks the best. Um, it's all about how appropriate the book is for the target market. And we also factor in aspects like um, production aspects, like making sure it's got a barcode and a, a logo on the spine of the book. So all those important things to make sure it's a professionally designed cover. Um, the, the judges in this category are all designers themselves so this this category is exclusively decided by designers so yeah it's not not at all just about oh it looks good it's all about how appropriate it is for your market and how well it reflects the content of the book and it's such a tough one you've got to have professionals cover designers actually judging it because it can be so speculative otherwise so um yes. yeah fantastic okay um and this one i think is over to me isn't it category 10 best cover design so our three finalists here are uh play big Brand Bold by Suzanne Chadwick. And that's a pretty big and pretty bold kind of a cover. Uh, we've got Diana Thompson's Anyone Can Speak Confidently. Um, great book. And I had the pleasure of, uh, of reviewing that uh, book and judging it. And once again, Zoe Routh with People Stuff, a very striking kind of cover there as well. So um, I don't know how our designers did this. Very, very close. But the winner is Play Big and Brand Bold by Suzanne Chadwick. Congratulations, Congratulations Suzanne. Congratulations, Suzanne. Well done.
Yeah, Very woohoo smart. indeed. Good on you. Good yeah. on you. And it's, you know, it's hard to pull off a cover with an author photo on the front cover. It's big, it's bold. And, you know, I love the 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 electric banana in the background and the flower. Yeah. So, you know, very, very cool cover. Very, very strong. Well done. And it's uh, really nice inside as well. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful book. And uh, and so what you win, uh, Suzanne, is you get publishing services from the one and only uh, team at Publishing Central. As we said before, any combination of advice on your current or your next book, printing, ebook, print on demand, and even, you know, for your next book, and we're assuming you're working on your next book here, Suzanne, um, you know, the team can help you with that as well. So you get a prize, a gift voucher uh, as well on that side of it. So, you know, awesome work on our covers. Uh, category 11, best audio book, Michael. This is this is always a tough one, right? Um, tell us a yeah, bit. This, yeah, this is a challenging one because the... Um, Judges are very much not just judging the content of the book, they're also judging the uh, production of the audio book. So how good is the sound quality? How good is the editing? All that type of thing. So it's kind of two aspects to this category. Um, so, uh, and again, like the cover design being judged by cover designers, um, these were judged by our, our two audio book experts, Ronsley and Dave Stokes. So there were six entries in this category mm -hmm. and the three finalists were uh, One Life, How to Have the Life of Your Dreams by Tina Tower, uh, Selling with Heart by Kim Cousins, and Content Marketing for PR by Trevor Young. And the winner was for the best audio book, Selling with Heart by Kim Cousins. Congratulations, Congratulations Kim. Kim. Well, um, obviously, that's the print version. I can't really hold up the audio book, but... <laughs> well done, Kim. And your prize? So the prize is $500 worth of publishing services from us at Publish Central. So again, that can be whatever you want it to be. Um, we'll be in contact with you and work out that. And $500 very generously donated from Smart WFM. Yeah, congratulations. Tough, tough, tough one. And our, our audio book mm. judges are tough. Um, so uh, there. Um, uh, Louise, you just asked, can we tell you a bit more about Publish Central? We're not really going to kind of dive into what our companies and bits and pieces do on here. It feels a bit too commercial, um, but thank you uh, for asking that question. Just you can check out the website um, or go to the ABBAs and check out the links there if you wish to. Uh, okay, so all of those awards, now we get down to the nitty gritty, which is the book of the year, which uh, again is tough. How do we judge the book of the year, Michael? Tell us about that process. Yeah, so the book of the year is just the book that scores the highest score out of all of the judging. So um, there's no separate process. It's just the highest scoring book in the, from the categories. And if there was ever a tie, there'd be another round of judging, but we haven't had a tie yet. So, um, so it's the highest scoring book throughout the awards. And that, that, you know, when you think about it across 20 judges and, you know, all the different kind of number yeah. system that we're using it's a pretty good, book. yeah pretty good indication right so yeah. um we had three finalists this year for this one so the high scores uh people stuff obviously with books that we've seen in a few categories you know are obviously going to be here zoe routh uh her book is fabulous uh colin ellis's book on the project book um the complete guide to consistently delivering great projects and of course then dr gary leong's ride to life uh, as well so they were the three finalists in the book of the year category and drum roll do, 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 do. the winner is milking it zoe ralph congratulations zoe you've done it Yay. The, congratulations zoe well done. the australian business book awards of the year 2020 yours is the book of the year and uh and very good book so congratulations Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. And, uh, and I, uh, our last year's winner um, got so much out of being the, the, the winner of the book of the year. Um, so much leverageability, so many different uh, elements of that. So um, it, it's a great prize. Now, um, and it's a great acknowledgement of a fabulous book. There are four prizes. Um, you get a cash prize of $1,000 from Smart WFM, uh, Ingram Spark, uh, donating a cash prize of $1,000. 
uh, Publish Central, $1,000 worth of publishing services and my book power program uh, at $1,495. So you get a total prize value of $4,495, um, which is pretty cool, pretty wild. And uh, on top of everything else, um, amazing when you think about it. So a big, big congratulations to each and every one of our 2020 Australian Business Book Awards finalists. Um, you know, a great, great team. And as I said earlier on, it's really, really hard. Like, you know, people are separated by 0.25% of a point, half a point. I mean, it is so close, um, you know, with everything we're doing in there. So we want to do a, a big thank you to everyone who's been involved, our authors, almost 80 authors is amazing right like just in incredible yeah. when you think about it um and we next year we're definitely going to crack the 100 mark we're pretty happy about that um yeah. our judges michael do you want to say a couple of words to thank our judges yeah one thing i don't think we've mentioned so far this evening is the judges don't get paid at all yeah. so um it's important to point that out uh, they give their time freely so that's uh very very generous of them especially when everybody's so busy um, so thank you to all our judges. Uh, it's quite a, quite an effort when everybody's running their own businesses and all that kind of thing. So thank you. And again, without our sponsors, uh, we wouldn't have been able to give $10,000 uh, to the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. Uh, and we wouldn't have had so many great prizes uh, donated by 5x5, five five, Ingram Spark, uh, Triple Win, Tick Those Boxes, uh, Publish Central, Department Digital, Tracy Sheen, uh, Melinda Heard, lovely Melinda Heard, you know, a, a great, great group of sponsors. And of course, um, Jared and Michelle at Smart WFM uh, as our platinum sponsors. Um, and again, it's just been an extraordinary awards. Um, again, we just want to also say, you know, please take some time to check out the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. Uh, I lived in North Queensland for many, many years uh, where Indigenous communities are close by, Yarrabah, uh, Woodja Woodja, Arakoon on the Cape there. The, the work that the Indigenous Literacy Foundation do is extraordinary and they are making a difference. And everyone involved in the awards, um, you know, should kind of acknowledge the fact that you've made a difference um, in not only writing extraordinary books and publishing great books and being brave enough to enter them in the awards, but also by helping us to support the Indigenous Literacy Foundation. Uh, so that $10,000 don donation is from all of us. Uh, collectively when you look at it from that point of view. And Michael, next year. Yeah, next year we are going to do it again. So if you're interested in entering um, and you want to keep up to date with all the news, uh, go to the website, businessbookawards.com.au and sign up to the newsletter or you can do all the usual stuff, follow us on Facebook. Um, but yeah, we're um, going to have a bumpy year next year. We've, we've been busier than ever. I've had many many phone calls this year people ringing up saying i finished my book in lockdown so i think next year is going to be a big year it's going to be huge and uh and you know we get a lot of satisfaction out of doing the awards we we treat them very seriously we we have a really rigorous process poor anna is um is shipping and and picking up and collecting books and organizing us judges which is not easy when you think you got 20 odd judges that have got to be separated and brought into control so um anna uh is does an amazing job and the lovely little o who, who supports us uh through web development some ideas buying us coffee when we need it all of those kind of things as well um so our tight little team uh it's it's just a pleasure to be involved in something like this so um, I absolutely love it and I look forward to being a part of the, the uh, Australian Business Book Awards for many years to come. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. We're over and done. The recording will go live tomorrow. Um, we'll tell the world. The media release will go out with the winner. All of you who were finalists and winners, you'll be hearing from us in the next day or two. Uh, well, you'll be hearing from Anna and because uh, she's the only one of us who's organised enough to actually do all of that stuff. Um, and she'll be sending out all the information. And please keep an eye out. You're going to have a, a trophies will be coming out in the mail um, as well. So, uh, so thank you. And thank you. There we are. Here's the trophies beautifully held up. Be you've been a beautiful model tonight, I might add, Michael. Um, thank you. I want to say, I think we had about 80 people register for the event. And I think we had about 76 people that were live um, as well. So that's pretty extraordinary, actually. So thank you for everyone who decided to watch the Australian Business Book Awards instead of the RAs. I think you made a wise choice. It's pretty much my, my kind of... Uh, Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. All right.
Thank you, folks. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you again, same place, same time next year. And thank you, Louise, for uh, for commenting and, and kind of commentary as you uh, in the chat box as we ran through the awards. Good night, everyone. Thank you. See you, Michael. Thanks, Andrew. Fantastic. Good room, mate. See ya.